but kind of kind of the niche and what I really enjoy doing is fishing for bass in in our Highland Lakes. And so that's what we'll uh, we'll talk about today. And if you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to uh, to let me know. But again, shout out to uh, to Trey and and Scott and all the folks with uh, uh, Austin Fly Anglers and of course All Water Guides as well. But, okay, but first I just want to talk about something real quick. By the way, that was out on uh, Canyon Lake just a couple of days ago. It's Jonathan Gray. We were on some stripers the other day. But I want to just talk about what to me. And I think to all of us and to the fly fishing community, uh, you know, a little bit about what matters. And that's just, you know, we talk about conservation, we talk about teamwork. It's that sort of that hashtag one team that we put on a lot of our posts. You know, you can look over here and, uh, you know, you see the oyster. We just got some, some prime habitat in the mid coast closed commercial oystering. We got Recovering America's Wildlife Act, which is past the house and now awaiting the Senate. Uh, so call your, call your congressman on that. It's a huge deal. It would mean $50 million coming into Texas for habitat improvement, fisheries and wildlife habitat improvement annually. Of course, you got the first annual Loco Trash Bash there and now. Alvin, how, ma how many tons of trash this year? 22 and a half tons. 22 and a half tons of trash removed. Um, and then of course you have some, some, some work that's being done over in Oregon and California that was just put out this week on some dams that are coming down to kind of help those salmon, what's going on with the salmon. So there's a lot going on in the conservation community. That's what matters. That's why, that's really, and I, I haven't really seen a group other than, you know, the fly fishing community that's so in touch with all of that. And, and this is again, back to the one team. You got multiple conservation organizations, and this is just an example. You got private businesses involved, you've got state agencies, you've got nonprofits, so it all comes together for conservation. So just think about that as the day, you know, as you're going through the day. Um, all right, we're gonna talk about lakes, we're talking about access, we're talking about locations, some setups and some flies, and hopefully it's not too boring for you guys. But really that's what we're talking about. We're talking about the Highland Lakes, okay? Um, you know, it's really, a, it's a river system, it's Colorado River. There's a couple of, of lakes that we're gonna to touch on briefly that aren't necessarily in this, in this system. But the way I look at it is I look at the, you know, it's really the same body of water that's just separated by these dams. So that's kind of how I get my mindset on this thing. And so it's really consistent too. The fishing is, is, is pretty consistent. There's a, a few exceptions to that. And we'll talk about that here in a little bit. All right, so I, I kind of put it into a couple of different categories of the lakes. And, and I think, you know, someone else may categorize these their own way, but the way I look at it is Bass Drop and Decker to me are, are, are similar. Not exactly, but there are some similarities. Lady Bird and Lake Austin have some similarities. Lake Travis, LBJ, and Buchanan have some similarities. And then Marble Falls and Inks Lake to me have some similarities in size and some other, and some other aspects. But what we're gonna focus on today is really Travis and Buchanan. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on a few other lakes um, specifically, but these are, the, these are my go-to lakes. When we go fishing nine times out of 10, we're gonna go to Travis or we're gonna go to Buchanan. As I mentioned, we were on Canyon the other, the other day. Uh, we fished Lake Austin some, we fished Decker, we fished these other lakes, but these are, these are really the, uh, the, the two that we're gonna talk about. So just some areas, and so to kind of get your mind around Travis, um, you know, when you look at Pace Bend here, kind of mid lake, however you want to call it, that I fish a lot around Pace Bend. Um, I fish a lot around the mouth right here of the Pertinalis River and up into about that bend right there. Spent a lot of time there. We fish the shoreline a lot right here. We fish these shorelines a lot. Uh, the narrows way up the lake are fantastic, and especially if you want to target something a little bit different, maybe a mixed bag, white bass going into the spring, crappie, fantastic up there in the narrows. It's been a little shallow lately, so it's a little bit hard to, hard to get to, but, um, and then of course Cow Creek, they're close to Pace Bend, uh, and then uh, also we fish uh, a lot uh, at Bee Creek as well, back this port. So we spend a lot, we, we fish all over Lake Travis. It is. Population of bass, as far as population goes, I'd put Lake Travis up against anywhere. 
Now there's some lakes that I'd fish over in East Texas. I mean, I love fishing Rayburn. I love fishing Choke Canyon, but Travis is, is close. It fishes fantastic, as does Buchanan. So we'll talk about Buchanan, a Silver Creek. Some people call it Silver Creek. Some people call it Beaver Creek. Uh, the mouth of the Colorado as well. Whoops. The mouth of the Colorado right here. And of course, you can go on up, you know, towards Colorado Bend State Park. And obviously you can put in at Colorado Bend State Park if you have a boat small enough. Or you can just go up there and wade um, as, as shallow as you can go for when the white bass run's happening. We, uh, we end up fishing this area a lot right here when the, white bass, when the white bass is on. And then we fish a lot coming up in February and March, uh, the LBJ, the Lano uh, arm of LBJ as well. But uh, right now in the last couple of, in fact, Alvin and I were fishing out here not too long ago. Um, but if you put in here at Lano County Park and just kind of idle out here towards the, towards the dam or around these little points, this point over here, Lots and lots of hybrid stripers and white bass. Lot, that's great fishery, very, very consistent over the summer. Uh, it changes a little bit going into the cool weather, and then we tra I transitioned to Canyon Lake for, that, for, the, for, the, uh, for the striper fishery. But uh, fantastic bass fishing lake in the spring, uh, early fall. I think you, you, you heard Chris say if he had one time that he would like to fish, he mentioned fishing in uh, October, November. Same deal, love it. Love the early fall fishing. We've been having some weird weather, you know, this last couple of weeks. It's like it hadn't gotten out of the 50s, so that's a little bit uncharacteristic. But um, this time of year is fantastic. Canyon Lake will only get better going into the colder months, okay? So going on into December, January, it'll get better. The, the stripers become more active, and they're pretty good-sized fish as well. So these are my setups, and when I'm and again, we're talking about fishing, you know, highland lakes that, you know, there's a lot of different stuff going on. There's a lot of points, there's a lot of deep water, there's a lot of bluff banks, there's a lot of rocks. Six, seven, or eight weight with either intermediate sinking line. And when I say intermediate, I'm talking about something that sinks one to three seconds, uh, I mean, one to three inches per second. And then a six or seven weight forward floating line, obviously just, uh, you know, poppers, streamers, that's gonna be more of a summer, spring, early fall deal. This, this time of year, I'm using an eight weight uh, sinking line. I like a, a, a line that see, sinks about six seconds, uh, six inches per second. So I know if I count to 40, it's gonna be down 20 feet. Silver minnow, we'll get to some flies here in a minute, streamers. Now on this sink, this is one thing that I've, I've kind of figured out over time is this right here. When I want that line to get down, Okay, when we want that line to get down and we're fishing maybe a point and we've hit spot lock and we're just holding tight, fishing this point with maybe a crawfish or a streamer, I'm using a four foot, a very short leader. Straight fluoro, 12, 14, maybe 17 pound, no taper, okay? I don't necessarily really care how that kind of unwinds. I just want it to get down, I want it to go deep. Um, as, deep as, I, as deep as I can get it to fish those points. Um, that's also my fall setup. So that's what I'm fishing on Canyon right now as well. We're fishing a short, a short leader on an eight weight with heavy sinking line. And the other thing too is you don't necessarily have to, of course we're chasing schools of fish around. You don't necessarily have to do a super long cast. You know, it's, if, we, if we find them on the graph, we can, we can do a relatively short cast we can fish those, fish those suspended fish there. But those are, the, those are the main rigs that I use. You'll see I have highlighted in, in, uh, in yellow. If I, what my preference is, is the seven on the first option, the seven on the second, and then an eight. There's some big old fish in Travis and some big fish in Buchanan. Obviously the stripers are big on Canyon, but I mean, we had, a, we had some good bass on this year and uh, you know, it can be kind of tough to get them in on a, lighter, on a lighter rod. And then of course, if we're fishing that heavy sinking line, I like to have a little bit heavier rod as well, it's just easier to cast. And of course, with this very clear water, I use a lot of fluorocarbon. I like the way it sinks. Um, it's a little bit thinner, it's better on abrasion, and, uh, and the fish just don't see it. So, yeah, yes. So you're targeting these uh, deeper fish, mm -hmm. Your fly hits the uh, water, are you stripping as it sinks? 
Uh, not necessarily. So, sometimes, so let's say we're fishing a, a bluff bank on Travis that's got some boulders, you know, they're just right there. So there's some structure there and then there's a drop off. So we may be sitting in 20 or 30 feet of water, but casting to three feet. And then, you know, it's sort of, it sort of slant, uh, slants off as, as you get to the boat. So what I'll do sometimes is I'll give it a, just a second to sink, like if I'm fishing a game, game changer, and then I'll do a real quick retrieve, like that bait fish is trying to run from something from the rock, okay? Then if I don't get bit, I'm gonna let it sink, and I'm gonna do my count wherever we think the fish are, and I'm gonna do sort of vary, a varying retrieve, different speeds, just kinda depends how the day's going. So what are the lakes, what are, what are the bass eating, okay? Primarily gizzard and threadfin shad, um, a lot of, you know, really what I have the best luck with is threadfin, threadfin shad imitation flies and crawfish. Um, of course, they're eating frogs and bluegill, other types of shiners, fathead minnows, crappie, baby bass, terrestrials. It goes on and on and on. But like, what are the, what are the big ones? Well, the big ones on Travis and Buchanan, you know, you got your bluegill, you got your shad, you got your crawfish. That's kind of what I, what I stick with. Let's talk about flies. There's something about this fly that, and that I just, for, for Travis and Buchanan, it, Travis is not a real froggy lake, okay? Um, you know, Lake Austin around the docks, Buchanan around the docks, and you find some grass, and you maybe go up Silver and Beaver Creek, yeah. But the poppers still do very, very well. Um, I like green, I like gray, I like black. Uh, so that's one of our go-tos. Not so much now, I, I, but I'll fish at any time in that water temp. So we're kind of in the border right now, but I'll fish a popper. If the water temp's 70 degrees, I'll fish a popper all day long, especially if it's cloudy. Um, and I'll fish it later into the day and earlier into the evening as well. Just have great luck fishing points on Travis with poppers. Tan and white clouser is another go-to on, on all these highland lakes. It's just Something about the, the shad imitation again. Uh, gray and white, tan and white. Of course, I like chartreuse too. The Orvis crawfish, the thing I like about it is it's got the double heads, it's got the double beat, it gets down. I know Alvin fishes that, that uh, fly as well. Uh, other crawfish patterns, it doesn't necessarily have to be this one. I know Living Waters has a really nice pattern that they sell. Smaller crawfish too work real well also, so it doesn't have to be this big, but I do love a, a crawfish fly that's got some weight to it. Deceivers. Now, there's a little, I'm not gonna say the fly, but I have probably caught more fish on Travis with a deceiver than any other fly. Um, especially if I'm not fishing poppers. It's just a shad, it looks like a shad. Uh, does great. Sometimes uh, I'll even fish a double rig where I'll put a, I'll fish a deceiver and I'll fish a smaller clouser off the back if we're catching some Guadalupe's in the rocks or whatever. But deceivers work fantastic in the Highland Lakes. Game changer. Has anyone in here thrown game changer much? Okay. I like the kind of the micros and the midsize game changers. They also work great for stripers. We use them a lot for stripers. Um, there's something about, you know, when you're pulling that, when you're pulling that, that bait, that fly in, and if it, it if it, when it kind of angles off, there's something about that game changer that will trigger those stripers when they're subsurface that other, you can't get them to bite other flies. So I'm a big fan of the game changer. In fact, Lene was out not long ago, we were fishing together and she, she was throwing a black game changer with a pink tail, caught a beautiful bass on it. Silver Minnow by Casey Smart. Casey Smart, um, his stuff is, all, and by the way, I, there's no secrets. You can Google up Casey Smart, Canyon Lake. I think his last blog was in 2005, maybe. I'm not saying that he invented the, uh, the, uh, the silver minnow, which is a play on a clouser with a 60 degree uh, tie. Um, but on a, I mean, a 60 degree jig hook. There's, he also does it with a 90 degree jig hook. That is the fly on Canyon. That's the fly. I mean, it outperforms anything, subservice stripers, crazy. And uh, basically just a gray bait imitating a shad and about a two inch size fly. I've got a box full of them right over here. I'm gonna show you some things in a minute, but that's a fantastic fly. And by the way, if you wanna learn more about stripers on Canyon, 
Google him up, check his site out. Lots and lots. He kept a diary for a long time on water temperature and, and, and uh, air temperature and how he did and where he fished. Even got maps to where he fished. Okay, so what am I throwing now? I mean, again, kind of getting out of poppers, uh, midsize, like I said, micro game changers, deceivers, double rig deceiver clouds, or of course streamers. That's what we're throwing right now. Um, let's talk technique a little bit. Spring, you know, we're, we're also beating the bank a lot on these lakes, you know, we're, we're fishing the bank. Um, I'm gonna just kind of talk about technique on how we fish the bank in a, in a few slides, but um, heat of the summer, with the water going down like it was on Travis, it was, there was a couple of, um, there was a month or so in there, it really was tough fishing. We still, we would catch fish early and late, but it was just, it was so hot and they were drawing that lake down so fast. Every time you went out there, it was like you were fishing a different lake. Um, so just the main thing with the summertime, the heat of the summer is we fish real, real slow, okay? And then fall, winter, again, my favorite time to fish. Unseasonably cool, as I mentioned, but, uh, going into the really, first, until we get the first hard freeze, and then after that first freeze, you're already planning for spring, right? So it, it does, seems like it doesn't last too long here as far as the, the slow months. So let's kind of talk technique here where, where we're fishing. Uh, right now, you know, this is the lake out here, and this is what we call a main point. These are secondary points. Then these are back, you know, the backs of creeks and things. Secondary point here, secondary point. This would be a primary secondary point. So what happens when the fish, like right now the fish are kind of gorging themselves. They're, they're, they're really feeding very, very well. They're getting ready you know, to, to start thinking about the spawn. So they're, they're kind of out here on these main points, maybe some going out to these secondary points. And then again, we'll be getting into February, March, and they'll be going up the creeks and getting into shallower water and we'll, we'll see in a lot of beds. I don't target a lot of fish on beds. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where um, not being judgmental at all. Um, I, I, I'll pick off the, the wolf packs and the males and stuff, but I, I generally don't throw the big females on the beds. Um, but again, to each their own there. So again, that's, those are the areas we're fishing right now. We start thinking about the spawn. Again, at 55 to 65 degree uh, water temperature in the south, it's Mar March and April. That's for us. Northern states, more May, June. They're gonna be in one to 15 feet of water. And Travis, we see them most of the time, you know, in that probably at five to 10, three to 10 feet of water, maybe a little bit shallower. On LBJ, they get in very shallow water, okay? They get in very, very shallow water on LBJ. Foot and a half, two feet in those, uh, in those, mo in those marinas, and a lot of people target those fish. Again, just looking at some beds here, um, as Chris said, on the cichlids, the female is the small one and the, and the male is the big one. And, and bass, the female is obviously the big one and the male is the small one. That's a, kind of a blurry picture of a bed. Okay, back to the secondary points. So as we transition into the spring, we're going to be going probably February, we're going to be going to those secondary points. We're going to be getting off the main points of the lake, okay? So we're gonna be going back off the main, the main uh, lake body. Now, if you really, really wanna get into it, and this is probably a little bit too much information, in the, colder, in, in the colder months, we try to look at the northeast quadrant of a lake, the mouth of a creek, ideally with a bend, the steep drop off on one side, spawning flat on the other. You're trying to maximize where that heat is gonna be and where that warmer water is gonna be. We actually have on Buchanan and Travis, we map it out. So we know where these spots are ahead of time. And it actually pays off up, uh, over time. We do, we do really well fishing with this strategy. You know, that's a fad. It's a fish attracting device that Parks and Wildlife puts out. They're on all the major lakes. You can get online, you can go to parksandwildlife.com and you can check it out and they'll give you GPS marks of where they are. We fish these, I recommend you fishing them. It's structure. It's, it's, it's shade in the summer, it's structure in the winter. They hold a lot of fish, they hold a lot of bait fish. So put some time and effort learning where your fads are on the lakes that you like to fish. And of course, a lot of people put out their own brush piles as well. All right, don't forget about the docks. All right, so someone answered this question. So if you were gonna approach, if you were, let's say 
that it is March, April. We're going to go back in, in the back of the creek because remember we said the fish are spawning now, so they're going to be in shallower water. Where would you fish this dock? There's some clues on that, but a lot of people, traditional, you know, throwing wacky worms and crankbaits and everything, you know, you'll, they'll, they'll kind of buzz through here with the trolling motor on and maybe fish here and go the next. I really like to fish the far, the behind the docks. Have a lot better luck fishing behind the docks. This structure here, this structure, throw along that, you know, so if we're looking at that, we throw along that, and then the same thing goes, you know, you're fishing along here, maybe along that exterior side. So this, 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 if you're approaching this dock, that's at least four casts. If not, two or three casts in each one of those spots, okay? Docks, like all, I mean, all, all the Highland Lakes pretty much have them, but I spent a lot of time on the back side and not so much on the front side. Same deal. Come around the back of it. Get in there. Get your boat in there and hit these spots, that structure, and that rock, these steps that are going down. We fish a lot of steps. Anything that's different, okay? So drop-offs and transitions, and this is you know, sort of we're looking at some main light points here. So let's look at this and let's kind of, if you'll notice, I have, a, I have an arrow here going both ways. So a lot of people would, appro a lot of people approach this and it's, there's nothing wrong with it. And they'll, they'll come in this way at 90 and they'll, or they'll come out here and they'll fish 90 degrees and they'll, fish, they'll cast like this on this bank. What I like to do is I like to work the bank this way. And I like to find, you can see, kind of see that faint drop off right there. Um, depends on the time of the year, but I like to fish to where we have maybe two anglers on the front or one angler on the front, one angler on the back, and we're going in this way. Now that depends on the wind, it depends on your casting ability, you know, all these different variables. But if you can, we catch more fish doing it this way than this way. You can really see this nice transition here, okay? Um, you've got some wind or something blowing in here and it's kind of muddy. So a lot of times, and we'll get to a windy point in a second, you'll have waves crashing on these points and that'll create this. The bait will hide and take refuge because that's, it's not structure, but they feel safe in there. So we'll fish these, these edges, a lot of these edges because the bass are going in there and they're picking off bait. Again, there's a main lake, so you hit these points. You see this right here, this little ship. That's very different than this. Rocky shoreline, we got a little beach right here. So this point probably goes all the way out to here. So maybe we approach this a little bit differently. We come in here and we hit it like that. So anyway, just be very aware of your surroundings, of the structure of the, of the uh, you know, sort of the formation of the lake. Okay, the dreaded windy point. Probably the hardest casting that you know that there is when you got this going on and that's i mean i'm kind of i don't know that i'd necessarily be out there in that but my point is when the winds when the winds blowing like that but that's where the fish are especially in so if we're not targeting if we're not going back in the back of coves great thing about travis is travis is so snaky that you can get out of the wind you always get out of the wind at travis okay but cannon not so much, especially depending on what ramp you put on. You could sink your boat trying to get out of the lake. But the thing about this is we, we, if we get a little wind blowing into a point, maybe not that extreme, we're going to fish that because that's where the bait are. It's pushing the plankton into these points. The shad are feeding on the plankton, and the bass are eating the shad. That's what's going on, okay? Just to kind of demonstrate, it's exactly what's going on. You got this turbulence coming in. You got the rebound current. You got the shad eating the plankton. And a lot of people say, like, God, this is the, this is the, uh, the roughest part of why you know, we need to go into codes. We wouldn't spend all day fishing windy points, but it's worth it because it's surprising how many fish this will hold. Hey, wait, is there, is Scott, is that a picture of you in here? <laughs> How'd you get in there? All right, fishing rocky shorelines, deeper drop-offs. Again, think about that water depth. Give the, you ask the question about what am I doing? You know, if I'm fishing a, a rocky shoreline again, I'll do a quick, maybe a quick retrieve, just to kind of like, oh, that bait fish is, is maybe, it's, it's, it knows that there's a bass there or something, and look, so 
a lot of times that'll trigger a bite. If that doesn't, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow it down, I'm gonna let that fly get down a little bit, deep, bit deeper. I may transition to a crawfish or a different type of a streamer. But um, when I answered your question, I was more to talking about like a deceiver or a game changer, not necessarily like a crawfish or something like that that I'm gonna fish more towards the bottom. And then dead sticking is, uh, is a lot of times we'll get a deceiver, especially on a windy point or maybe a real deep drop off. We'll cast that deceiver out there and we'll kind of get our tension of our line in. We don't even retrieve it. We're dead sticking it. We're letting that fly sink and then it may be moving the, move, moving the rod tip, especially in the summer when things have really slowed down. We're fishing super slow and then those bass will just come up and nail that deceiver fish that way. Some tricks that we do also, we'll put a little small split shot in front of a, maybe a, a, in front of a game changer or in front of a deceiver just to get it down a little bit deeper if we need to. Um, don't be afraid of the double rigs as I, as I mentioned. Again, twitch that rod, not always the line. You gotta you know, move your rod tip a little bit. Pop and fly is something that we, we start, I started doing last year uh, in the summer, in the mornings and in the evenings. It's basically just a little, uh, you basically have your leader, you have about three, line, three feet tied on from your fly line to the popper, which has no hook, it's just a piece of foam. And then you have about four feet tied below that with like a clouser. You're casting that to, a, to kind of a rocky shoreline and you're popping that, that, that pop and fly. Your clouser's kind of going up, rising and going back down and we, we pick up some fish that way uh, when it's warmer too. Think about shade and structure and cover. In the heat of the day, you gotta fish the, the shady side of the lake. You gotta fish under uh, the dock. You gotta fish under that tree or under, under that debris. The fish are not just gonna, gonna be sitting out there unless you go deep, unless you go deeper, okay? And then the relationship with conventional tackle. Who in here uses conventional tackle? I won't look, I won't look. Okay, yeah, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that and sometimes you'll learn more, you know, where are the fish? Um, a little bit, you know, what's going on with this lake. Uh, I would say it's about 25% of the time I'm throwing conventional tackle. I, sometimes clients like, like that, but I, I really enjoy the challenge of fly fishing and learning as much as I can on the lakes rather than, than conventional tackle personally. And again, I'm, I have mentioned fluorocarbon a couple times. I'm a true believer of fluoro. Okay, white bass, hybrid and stripers, Lake LBJ, the Lano arm. Had a really good year last uh, February in uh, doing that. I mentioned Colorado River above Buchanan, Buchanan at the dam, Canyon Lake, and then the Narrows. Right now, this time of year, it's pretty much Buchanan, open water, looking for schools, okay? Or Canyon for bigger stripers. Canyon has bigger, like if you wanna target bigger stripers, we're gonna go to Canyon, okay? If you wanna target hybrids, whites, stripers, we're gonna go to Buchanan. Now, at Canyon, you may, we may see one school all day. Now, we're gonna cast a suspended fish. You may not catch a fish on Canyon, but you may catch a 15 or 20 pounder on Canyon. On Buchanan, you're probably gonna catch more fish, but they're gonna be smaller, so it's kind of a trade-off. My hybrid striper and white bass, so for me, an eight weight is what you need for, for stripers. That's what my go-to is an eight weight. Hybrid six to eight. Um, we caught some pretty good hybrids this year out on Buchanan. We caught some 20 inches, 20, 20, 21, 22 inches. And then uh, I take two rigs. I take the sinking and the intermediate. I mentioned that. So again, just having that flexibility. So that's, you know, it's, it's, it's not perfect, but that's, that's, uh, that's sort of what we do and how we target these bass on the Highland Lakes. It's a lot of fun. The fishery is great. Um, you know, really other than the coldest months of the year, you can go out and some, some spots that we have that I mentioned around Pace Bend and some other locations, catch a, have a good popper bite, a good topwater bite in the morning, and then transition to some streamers a little bit later in the day. Um, so, you know, I'd, I'd love for you guys to come out and fish with us sometime. Are there any questions that I can answer? Yes, ma'am. Zebra mussels, good question. I saw a picture the other day from a biologist that had sent me a, a blue cat 
that they had um, caught and they, they had cut the stomach open to look at and you could not get another zebra mussel in there. So I had never seen that before. So I got to do some, I got to figure out what was going on there. But um, it's clarified the lake is much clearer than it was. Um, other than that picture, I've never known there to be any natural predators. And, and I'm a little suspect of that, so we got to figure out what was going on with that. But, um, you know, one thing is when you're, when you're fishing Travis right now and you're looking up at that bluff bank and you know, 35 feet, 28 feet above you, you see that line of zebra mussels. It really puts into perspective how low that lake and how dire our drought situation in Texas is. And it's how serious of a problem that is. It's terribly low still. Um, so, but yeah, basically, um, other than some intake and some, you know, obviously it, the zebra mussels cause problems around docks and pipes and intakes uh, and all that. And of course, it's hard to get out. You don't want to walk on the rocks because you'll cut your feet. Um, but it has made the lake very, very, any, anywhere with their, their filter feeders. So they're going to make the lakes much, much clearer than they used to be. That's another reason we use fluorocarbon because the lake's so clear. But since you asked that question, here's a nice Yeti mug for you. Now all of a sudden the hands start going up, right? Graham, yeah. can you tell people how often you run into angry dock owners and get mad that you're fishing the dock? Yeah, you know, a couple of times. I mean, it's happened. It's happened um, a couple of times. I mean, those that don't know, I'm, I'm uh, also a volunteer a lot of time with Texas backcountry hunters and anglers. And so, you know, we advocate strongly for uh, public access and, and uh, you know, protection and access and education uh, that's tied along with that as far as, relate, you know, relating to outdoor uh, resources and public lands and public waters. And so uh, what we do is we try to be obviously respectful of someone's dock, um, just like we would be respectful of their property. But if a dock's on Lake Travis or Buchanan or, I mean, it's on public water and you can certainly use, fish that as structure. And so, um, you know, I don't, I don't try to get in a big controversy with them. I'd probably just keep fishing though, so. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I, I, it depends what time of year, but um, primarily, uh, you know, if you wanted to go bass fish, I'd say, you know, he booked through all water guides and, uh, and then we would go, probably go to Travis. You know, but I can also make that convenient for wherever you guys, you know, if, if it's better to go to Lake Austin, we could do that. So, but here's a, speaking of, here's a uh, loco trash bash cap for you answering that question, asking that question, I mean. And then, was there another question? Yes. Yes, uh, this time of year, certainly, the times that I use, on, on when I, if I'm gonna fish Travis or Buchanan and target bass, if I just have a weight forward floating line, it's really gonna be um, you know, early fall, spring, you know, when the bass are shallower in, in those coves where I was talking about. Um, and then if we're fishing the bank with like poppers, which we do, a lot during the summer, I'm, that's what I'm throwing. So, you know, we, we have all of, all of that on the boat. It just kind of depends on the situation. I mean, a lot of times we'll take that with a, we'll take a six or seven weight, weight forward floating line, not sinking, and we'll put a, a deceiver or a clouser on it, and we'll go and we'll fish docks and we'll fish the bank. Yeah, you bet. You bet, mm -hmm. yes ma'am. We might put a little, we might put a little split shot just to get a little bit, but again, that time of year, you're catching a lot of fish just off the bank. Just right, real shallow, yeah. And uh, here's a Yeti cap for you. <laughs> Any other questions, y'all? I have a question about uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. How far from the fly did you place the split shot? I put it right above, right where the knot is, as close to the fly as I can. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to necessarily have. I know in some situations, like if you're gonna, you know, if you're fishing in Colorado, you're, you're gonna maybe a, with a nymph or something or a. You know, you'll put the, the split shot up from the fly. I'm putting it right, right by the, as close to the fly as I can. Because I don't want that wonkiness going on. I just want it right on the, right on the fly. Yeah. Did I already give you something? <laughs> Any other questions? Well, listen, y'all have a good time. Thanks for being here. 
Thanks to again to uh, to Awesome Fly Anglers and All Water Guides. Appreciate you guys.